All right, so this lecture today is, you know, last class I talked about how you should spend one third of your time practicing scales. And I talked about the height scale book that I like to use in my lessons. And I usually have students memorize those scale exercises so that when they're getting ready to warm up, they're really thinking about things other than looking at the music. I will post these patterns in teams so you have something to look at but really what i want you to try and do is listen to the pattern and see if you can imitate that see if you can figure out what i'm doing I, the first one we've been talking about trying to expand your range and getting into the higher register for some of you the lower register and the whole pattern we're going to do one octave isolation and the whole pattern is one and a two E and a one E and a two E and a one and a two E and a one E and a two E and a one, all the way through. Just practice saying that in your head. One and a two E and a one E and a two E and a one and a two E and a one E and a two E and a one. And we are going to do one octave of the scale on that. And each time, because of where we put that eighth note, the inflection of where the scale is moving changes. And so here's a kind of what it looks like. I'm not sure you can even see it. And you can kind of look at the pattern. Take a minute to look at that. Like I said, I will put that up in um, Teams and Here's just an example of how we're going to work on it. I have the metronome set at 60. I don't want it to go too fast for right now because I want you to be able to listen to it and maybe even play along, figure out my pattern and practice that without even looking at the music. So I'm gonna play in C major. That's just the first scale that I always do. And so by playing that, you can focus and not having to look at music, you can focus on things like your posture, your sound, your embouchure, your air. Now you can do this, the arpeggio the same way. Again, you're going to go up and down the arpeggio, repeating that same pattern. This time it's going to be one and a two E and a one and a two E and a. See if I can do this. Now, if I want to take that same scale and go up an octave, do the same thing. So this is concert C. Every time I hit the C, I turned around and came down. And at first it takes a little time to get used to it. And then here's the arpeggio. So then after you've practiced like that, 
You know, it will make the scale. That much easier. And you can do that in every single key. And I'll tell you, it just cleans everything up. It helps you feel the pulse. We've been talking a lot these past couple of weeks about inflection in the music. And I just love these scales. I got it out of a, uh, a friend of mine, Chris Wiat, who is a bassoon player. He's retired now. But he published these books, oboe scales for reading. And he did them for, he's bassoon, so he did bassoon scales for reading published in 2006 and they're just really invaluable you know they work both octaves and it gets you to work on your hand position your posture keeping your fingers close to the keys another exercise that I always liked as a young student is to play the scale in triplets and go through the scale two times so I'm going to go two octaves this time and I'll put the metronome on about 72 and I'm going to be thinking triplets. And it's the same idea as this. I'll go from C to C, but you have to go three times through the scale. See if you can tell what I do. So that was just the C scale in triplets three times through. Going to the G, uh, F scale. If you go through all of your scales in triplets like that and practice them slowly and then speed up again. You'll have smooth scales. Your fingers will be close to the keys. They'll be relaxed. They'll be exactly what that I keep trying to get you to do. You know, I say to students all the time that you know you're gonna have to play these scales for the rest of your life. So what are you waiting for? You know, get on with it, get them learned, and then you don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, the other pattern that I really like is um, from the Bloise. I My training all comes from the French oboe style. And so Bloise has a pattern of scales that he uses. And again, I'll make a copy of this pattern 